G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. By now, you should have a really good idea of what a swale is. So I called Jeff up the other day and I asked him if he'd like to come out to my garden and demonstrate. I bet you know what he said. Yeah, he said, I'd love to. So here he comes, up the hill. It's a lovely day today to start a swale, I reckon. Because I was trying to listen and learn, I didn't put the full Weedy Garden Photography Department magic on this video. I'm saving it for the last and the final video on this swale series, which will be coming out about this time next week. So building a swale is easy. You just gotta get it right the first time. And here's Jeff again to give a hands-on demonstration. Welcome to part two of the Swale series. So I need a hammer and a mattock. Okay. I can use the back of an axe. Yeah, we'll have to use the back of an axe, that's all we got. I know which side's the right one to hit with. Yeah. Because your, your best footpath here is kind of like there, right down the middle of the ridge, going to that big post. Because then the water goes off evenly from the footpath. It's, you know, ridgeline tracks are the ne next most stable to contour tracks. So for you to get over the swale or get past the end of it, you either overflow here or you put a pipe crossing and continue the swale round to where it finishes. And this is a little pipe crossing footpath. So you're coming over here with your wheelbarrow and then you're coming down to your next one. There's another way we could do this and that's start from the extremity of the ridge. Yeah. Um, because that's the longest swale on this patch is that ridge line. But you're walking straight down. Any overflow is gonna get caught by these swales and spread and soaked into fruit trees. It's all gonna to get to the creek in the end, but on the way it's gonna grow our food. Yeah, I'm just going to get the, uh, uh, the A-frame and see where I go from here. Just seeing whether we missed that mango. If we missed that mango, we're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we want it just to be nicely balanced. I get slightly wobble back and forwards, but that'll do. I'm just doing a rough. Well, water will level it later. We'll miss that mango, that's the main thing. We will miss that mango. Is that good or bad? Oh, it won't really matter to the mango, it's a big tree. Well, it is going to benefit from the swell water, but generally the water's going to soak all around here. And I'm, I'm surveying here with this A-frame where I'm going to dig back into the hill. So it's just going to be sitting on the back of the swell and there'll be a whole load of fruit trees on this side. Mango's like a dry period and we're in a very humid landscape. So it doesn't matter that it's just on the top side. Uh, there'll be stuff underneath the mango. You'll probably have coffee and, and, and five corner fruit, carambola, Brazil cherry. Other things will grow under this giant mango over time. Uh, they won't be as productive in the sun, but they'll take up the space. And you'll be walking along the swale with your wheelbarrow full of mangoes uh, all the way around on a nice level. So it needs to be level because it'd be such a big mango, you know, wheelbarrow full of mangoes. I wouldn't want you going up downhill. Oh yeah, right, so we're gonna miss this mango. We're gonna go just below it, which will fit in really nice with that giant tree. And the mango tree's looking really nice. It's gonna have a lot of nutrient because I know that mango's got nutrient underneath it and that's gonna be draining into this swale. And it won't be just running down the ridge, it'll be going all the way around the garden. So why do you build swales, Jeff? Well, we build swales to interrupt the water flow that's running off the property, to spread it and soak it and share the nutrient through the system. Now we can place our nutrient above the swale and any water flow that starts to run on the landscape, we know it's running at right angle to contour. The swale runs exactly on contour, stops it, spreads it, soaks it with the nutrient 
that we actually position the swale to receive. How many more of those pegs you got? Can I get some more? I'll get some more. Yeah. You might want to you might want to time lapse me putting these in. Do, 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 do. Thanks for doing all the hard work, Jeff. That's all right. It's probably all the only thing I'm really good at. <laughs> Might be a little bit of root zone going around this uh, acacia. Do you reckon I should chop it out? Um, you're probably going to kill it with kindness anyway. Well, you'll shorten its lifespan because the job will be done. These trees are the green manure in the landscape. So their job is to fertilise. That's actually the fertilising green manure of the landscape, the acacia melanoxylon. So if, it's, if it gets too fertile, it's going to die because its job's done. When did you first hear about a swale? Um, my teacher, Bill Mollison. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really pick it up as clearly as I should on my permaculture design course, but when I went to visit his property, he was putting swales all over the place. And then I got to realise how important they were. You can use swale-type design in gardens as garden footpaths and moisture retention. But the definitive swale is a tree growing system. You can have vegetables in there for a little while, while there's enough sun. Yeah, when I've drawn a line, I'm literally drawing on the landscape here. So when I've pegged like this, I don't just jump in, I just walk it. I walk along it, see what it feels like, see what it looks like. Yeah, it feels kind of nice. You could, put, you could put three, but it's getting to be a bit crammed. You definitely couldn't put four. It's starting to look like terraces, and that's not the idea. I think two more would be nice. You're looking at something that's gonna be permanent, so you wanna get it right. I like this one, definitely need this one. Ridge line position, lowest point on the ridge line, defines that line and picks up all the nutrient of the garden, just about all the nutrient right on the middle of the ridge because that that spreads the water away from the overflow point dissipating the energy now the idea is it's got to be picked up on this swale we're about to put in so we don't let the water go all the nutrient we use it again we spread it and soak it I'm gonna put the soil on top of there so I want it decompacted first so I'm gonna start digging and um, I'm gonna just do a little bit of decompaction here I'm just going to prise here. All I want to do is prise it up a bit, relieve any compaction. And I'm just going to move over this section. You can hear it ripping. So I want to be able to get a wheelbarrow inside this swale and comfortably put it down flat. So this is the height that I, this is the width I want. And that gives me an, a, a, an idea of how wide this swale is going to be. So the bottom of the swale is going to be as wide as that wheelbarrow. I know it's going to be that wide. Now I need to go down. You haven't got a little spirit level, have you? I do. Yeah, we might use a little spirit level in a minute. This is going to take you a while to dig all my swales, Jeff. Yeah, I reckon I only do about five metres a morning for breakfast. That's my usual system with yeah, little swales. Yeah. As long as you've got a good breakfast ready for me. Nice. Yeah, I need beef, bacon, eggs and tomatoes. If you haven't got the beef bacon, I'll bring it. Good way to keep fit, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a start, isn't it? It's 
it's not it's not the only thing you need to do <laughs> so let's just size this up here's our wheelbarrow and our wheelbarrow needs to sit in there it, it sits down there, the, the legs of the wheelbarrow sit in there comfortably, a little bit of leeway. So when we're coming round with our wheelbarrow full of compost, mulch, or coming back with our wheelbarrow full of mangoes, uh, it's going to be nice and level, right? So we've got a nice level. This is our base here. And, and on my spirit level, it's more or less level. Water will level the rest of it. So that's our base. Now the water comes in and goes through this soft man. That's soft, look, 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 it's soft. Bit of, bit of topsoil in there and all the weeds and grasses all mixed together. And we've got a nice smooth mound. The water's gonna sit on here and it's gonna soak in that way, at right angle to contour. It's not gonna soak in there much, it's gonna soak in here and go into the subsoil that I, I decompacted the topsoil originally, and then put this topsoil on top. So if we had that much topsoil originally, which I decompacted, now we've got that much. So now we've got that much topsoil. From there to the base, we've doubled our topsoil in this section. That's good news for trees. They can go through this soft mound with the water going in under their roots, and they can go through the decompacted subsoil. All the grass on the bottom is gonna die, and all the vegetation above the surface that was above the surface and all their roots are going to be compost corridors in the soil and our tree roots are going to follow them through if you really want to know where you'd like the water on your trees and you thought about it so i'd like the water right at the roots of my trees and that's where it's going to go right through the roots of the trees so this mound is nice and soft it's got a gentle bank and it's got a gentle bank all of this is great planning space just to where the water's going to sit, which is, I predict the water's going to sit about there. That depends where we set our spillway. And then from there, over the mound, all the way down, and below is going to be enhanced for quite a few metres. So that's the advantage of the swell mound. Mm -hmm. On the upside, this is what we call the back cut. Now you can't leave it steep because the clay in the soil will swell up and shrink in different weather conditions. It's starting to fall in. You want at least one to one and a half slope on most soils. If it's unstable soil, even shallower. So as you get in the steep country with the one and a half to one slope, you're going to have more back cut because you're in steeper country. You're going to have more angle to lay back. It will be the same angle, but it will go further because of the steepness of the slope. So as we go round in this swale, the other end down there is steeper. This is the security back cut. You don't want this being a mess. You don't want this falling apart. You want this stable. Back cut, base, mound. Is plant the trees from where the water sits up over the mound, down to the other side and below. They're all enhanced. So I think from here over, premier spot, but also right down here, you're still getting plumes of extra moisture in the subsoil. Yeah, you want to hold a certain amount of water in that swale. Right? So we could move up here and go from there. I want to hold that much, right? Mm -hmm. So I could get my pen now and mark that mm -hmm. as a secondary mark. Mm -hmm. We're roughly level there, right? Yep. So we're going to go up about so high, right? So what we'd do is we'd mark it like that with our bit of mud. Yep. Can we see that mud? Yep. Yeah. So we want to come that high. That's the water we're going to have in our swale. Yeah. We want this water to overflow and pick up our next swale. We don't want to go too far along there because it gets steeper. So we're going to go along here. And we're going to go uphill. To the mud line. Yep. Right? And we're going to put another peg in here. This is going to be great when you see this happen. When you yeah. put the water on. Yeah. And then we're going to do that again on this one. Yep. Okay. Now we know, right? That is about that much higher than the bottom. Right, we know it's... Yeah. We're going to sit that much water in the swale. 
So we bring our swale up like this, up like this, up like this. Up. So we've got a straight edge along here. We'll come up like that, and our swale trench is going to go uphill and go wide out here and go back down again. And we're going to leave the mound off here. And that will set the height of the water in the swale. So this is called a level sill. Okay. Now uh, here, I don't want you to disturb this ground. I want you to keep that, that's an excuse for a little bit of lawn. Yeah. So that you want a, a really accurate cut there, a really accurate cut, sharp edge, yeah. and leave this grass and keep mowing this yeah. like a lawn. And when the water gets up to that height that we just measured, yeah. it'll come over here as a nice even stream. Yeah. No erosion ever, yeah. none. Never, never, never gonna happen. Ever. Ever. Never. Never. None. None. Whatsoever. So this will be an overflow point and that water will go down there and it'll hit that swell, which will block it from going off, and we're gonna do it again so it hits that last swell. And this one up here is gonna come round from the weedy garden on that side and have a little level sill on this end, right near the edge, middle of the ridge, yeah. and that's gonna level sill over there. And one day you're going to do a movie and you're going to take a little little rubber duck boat or a little little plastic duck and you're going to take him down here over the level sill, down here, down that one, take him on the journey down there, down there, down there, down there. And count all the mangoes on the way. Four hour video by itself, freestanding. <laughs> no, it'll be just feed it up. <laughs> With the sound effect of whack, 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 whack. <laughs> and another one you come out here and go, Listen to the swells at night, all the different frogs. Because it's surprising how many there'll be. They love shallow swells. It's an orgy. But that, that's why they really, really can breed. Shallow is what you want for a frog. It's a disco, man. And if you come out at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, there's one last frog, like the one drunk on the dance floor who can't get the girl. And there's just one left out, they go, wah, <laughs> wah. <laughs> like, once they get a root, they're finished, they stop. Yeah, they gradually go off as the night goes on. You know? They're rooted. <laughs> They've done it all. <laughs> Job done. See the little symbol down there? It says skip ad. It doesn't work. This one is my ad for the Weedy Garden. There's this thing called Patreon out there. And you guys know what it is. I'm on Patreon, you beauty. And if you don't know what at any given moment is, you'll find out on Patreon. Because that's what it is. It's on Patreon. What it is, check this out. It's sort of my life's work, really. And it's a story about my search for the source of my creativity. It took me 42 years to find out where it was. And you know what? It's the same place for everybody. And I want to share it with everybody that goes and supports me on Patreon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to go and check out my Patreon page. Got a lot of behind the scenes videos and a bunch of other videos that I don't put on YouTube from the garden. So go check out Patreon. And if you're a subscriber, please remember to check the notification button so you get a little notification when I put up a new video. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.